Hi guys, I thought I'd do an intro to my uh, high-speed camera project here. Um, I've actually been doing this for quite some time, almost two years, but now we're actually up to a uh, point where there's some hardware to show. Uh, I guess I'll show the old, this is the old camera that I built uh, several years ago. It's on a Spartan 3A development board and a uh, Cypress uh, Lupa 300 image sensor which is 640, 640 by 480 at 250 frames per second. That just the data sent to the FPGA and then to the uh, 64 megs of DDR2 RAM. And there's this Ethernet port you can uh, get the data off to computer and there's uh, VGA and the four extra bits I've added to each uh, color because the VGA DAC is just some resistors there with four bits per color. That brings it up to eight. This new camera is going to be a lot faster. It's going to use the uh, Lupa 1300, uh, yeah, Lupa 1300 image sensor. That's 1024, no, 1280 by 1024 at 500 frames per second. Uh, yeah, this is just based. This prototype is just based on a Altera Cyclone 3 FPGA dev board. Uh, hopefully, I'm eventually going to build this into a proper box with a custom board and uh, lots of RAM. Uh, this one just has how much does it have? I think it has 256, yeah, 256 megs of DDR2 and uh, four chips. They're uh, 16 bits each for a 664-bit wide data bus. Uh, and this is the add-on card I've built. Well, one of them. This is sort of an adapter that uh, for prototyping a bunch of stuff and for uh, connections through FFCs over here to the uh, image sensor board. Oh, it's upside down. Yeah, it's just the data data connections there, power connections here. A bunch of power supplies around it. And let me see if we can, I'll show you the image sensor here. Let me take it out of the box. And here is the image sensor. Uh, this is actually a Lupa 1300-2. It's the new version with uh, LVDS outputs. It's got 12 parallel outputs at 620 megabits per second. This is the color version. I also got a uh, monochrome version for testing too. Yeah, that will just go on to uh, this board actually on this side. This will mount three holes so you can uh, mount it to some sort of uh, lens mount that I've yet to uh, figure out or yet to determine uh, exactly what that's going to be. But the plan is to have um, screw head on this side and a spring on this side so you can trim the angle and uh, position exactly to get it in just the right pl uh, focal point. I'll just go over uh, what's on this uh, adapter board I've made here. Uh, starting on this side, this is the uh, power supply. It steps the 12 volts down to 5 volts. Um, on this side we have a Crontel uh, CH7301C uh, VGA and DVI transmitter. There's the VGI uh, diff pairs going off to the connector and there's a bunch of analog uh, filter for the VGA. Going around we've got a uh, Cirrus Logic uh, 96 kilohertz audio ADC and DAC. For, there'll be a microphone and a speaker on board as well as ports for uh, external microphones and speakers. Because uh, when, you want, when you're recording a high speed event you may as well get sound uh, as well, not have to have a separate camera, a separate sound recording device. This will also be 96 kilohertz, so you can slow it down somewhat and perhaps hear uh, ultrasonic frequencies that you couldn't hear otherwise. Another power supply for the audio chip. There's a real-time clock here. Um, above that, so there's some analog input uh, circuitry. There's going to be a couple of channels of analog uh, data and one digital channel and one uh, isolated channel through an optocoupler. Uh, it's a negative 5 volt supply for the analog. Um, another 2.5 volt supply for some logic. And there's also a BNC uh, I.O. for uh, trigger and general purpose I.O. And this is the connector uh, going down to the board. I had quite a difficult time soldering this connector. It's, uh, it's, it's this, this type of connector here. Yeah, it's quite difficult to uh, solder because these ground things... Come on, focus. 
these ground center ground pieces have no um, accessible pins. You have to heat the whole thing with hot air, put solar paste under it. And even they, I uh, don't know if you probably won't be able to see it, but even they have not, uh, Altera has not soldered these properly. There's a gap under one of the ground connections. You probably can't see it though. Right now I'm working on debugging the uh, video output. Got one of the uh, differential probes on the uh, clock and another one here for uh, viewing the data lines. And currently it's acting as if uh, it's not getting a clock for some reason, even though the, I'm sure the signal is actually getting to the pins. I can read and write the registers and set it up for everything, but it's acting just like there was no clock. The PLL is not locked, so this outputs do nothing. The, um, the DVI is putting out some uh, frequency, but it doesn't. it's not related in any way to the clock uh, frequency, so I think the PLL is just sitting there running at its own frequency. I have to see let's see if we can see anything on that. Uh, here we're looking at the uh, clock signal in yellow and the uh, data signal in blue, delayed about two and a half nanoseconds, very fast, uh, pretty clean edges. But again, it doesn't seem to the output doesn't do anything. If you look at the uh, output LVDS. That doesn't really get outputting it right now. I'll probably have to uh, start the software running and rewrite the registers. Okay, the, the software running in the embedded CPU core and the FPGA is running. I uh, just wrote all the registers. Let's see now if it's uh, doing anything. Yes, now we're getting some LVDS. But again, it's not synchronized at all to the uh, clock, which means I don't think the chip is actually getting a clock input. But I think that's enough for now. I'll continue working on debugging this. Hopefully you'll hear uh, soon what the actual problem was. I'll probably just try replacing this chip and see what that does first. Anyway, thanks for watching.